What if you could generate 100% AI generated videos that look real? What if it was as easy as talking to ChatGPT? Even better, what if you had full control of the production of such video? Yep, just like the one you're watching right now. Today, I will teach you how to use VO3 in Google Gemini and Google Flow and some of the best practices I have learned along the way. I will teach you how to prompt VO3, how to extend a scenes, and how to make the most out of it. Before we move forward, I will ask you to take a moment and like this video and subscribe to this channel. Every single like allows me to reach more people throughout the world to show them the magic of AI. But now that you have liked this video, let's jump in. Now there are two ways where you can access Google's video generation model within their ecosystem. Number one, it's going to be through Google Gemini. And generally, through Google Gemini, you are going to be able to access VO2. VO2 is their older model. It's not that bad, but it's also not as good as VO3. And realistically, if you want to use VO2, and you use it through Google Gemini, you only get three credits per day to generate videos. And we're going to be talking about what that means to you here in a moment. The second way that you can go about it is through flow.google.com. And this will allow you to, uh, to have a total of 1,000 credits. I have used quite a few today, but you get 1,000 credits that you can use to generate videos either we are using VO2 or VO3, depending on the type of video that you want to generate. And we're going to be talking about here in a little bit, what that means and how you can use these credits. Now let's start with Google Gemini. The way that you can access the Google video generation model is by going to Google Gemini, which is gemini.google.com. Once you're there in the input field, you're going to click on tools and you're going to click on videos with view. From here, you have quite a few options. You can either change what you're trying to do or you can just remove the video, but we're going to bring it back up. You cannot bring any files, but you can bring photos to use as a starting point. So I'm going to use this picture of me and I am going to type in the prompt. I'm going to make a separate video later on this week that will teach you exactly how I am building my prompts. It's relatively easy. It should not take you that long, but that's outside of the scope of this video. So I hope that you will come back to this video and watch that other video, which will set you up for success as you're making videos. Remember, you only get three videos in Google Gemini. So you want to make the most out of it. And even if you are going to use Google Flow, which is included in your Gemini Pro plan, you want to be able to get the most out of it because a thousand credits go by relatively fast. We're going to be talking about why that happens. But once you enter your whole prompt, we're going to send it and we're going to give it a moment to be able to get that done. Typically it takes between one and two minutes. And that's relatively fast, but in today's day and age where we want everything and we want it now, that might take forever. So we're going to jump into Google Flow for me to show you exactly how to get that done. And we're going to just jump tabs. And how to access Flow is you're going to go to labs.google forward slash fs forward slash tools forward slash flow. But even better, I will leave you the link down in the description below for you to be able to access it. And it's also on the screen down here. You should be able to see it anyways. But once you're in Flow, you want to create a brand new project. And once you create your project, you have quite a few options here. More options than you would typically have in Google Gemini. Let's explore these options. First one is how you want to go about the starting point for your video. You either create test video, let's say that you want a train that is driving by uh, New York City or whatever the case is, you describe it, it will create it for you. That's number one. 
Number two, you can go frames to video. And this is where I can add my image or I can generate an image to be used in this video. In this case, I will add an image of myself. And I can also add uh, once this uploads. Actually, let's do something slightly different. We're going to add a PNG picture because they tend to upload faster and it should be the same one that we used before. So drop and save. And as you can see, there are other images that I have been using during the day earlier today. If you want to change the background, you can add a background here. In this case, we're not going to add one because I don't have one saved to my computer. But let's say you want to use this subject, this character in the middle of, of the ocean, working on top of water, you could add a picture of the ocean and then VO3 will start drawing that and merging those two images together. But we're not going to do that today. And lastly, here you get control over how the camera goes during the video, movements and certain zooms and certain aspects to give it that cinematographic style that you would want. And it's a little bit easier than prompting, but you also get full control in your prompt. If you decide to add it to your prompt, we're going to add the exact same prompt that we added in Google Gemini. We're going to add it here. Now, the next few, they're going to be important. So this one is where you determine how many outputs you get for every prompt. We're going to leave it as two, which is the default. And here you get to select which of these models to use for your video. If you look down here, you're going to see the cost for the video and VO2 fast only costs 10 credits. But if you go to VO2 quality, it costs 100 credits. Then if you use VO3 fast, it costs 20 credits. And lastly, if you use VO3 quality, it also costs 100 credits. The difference between VO3 quality and VO2 fast is night and day, but we're going to be talking about when you will have to use VO2 fast versus VO3 quality. I personally use VO3 quality as my starting point for my projects, and then I switch models as I go through it, but we're going to be talking about that in a moment. If you need to clear the prop, you can do so here. And here you have some settings, again, change models and change the amount of output per prompt. We're going to send this out. And as you can see, it started working with the VO3 quality. We're going to return to Gemini. It looked like the video is ready. Let's take a look. Let's All right, the video is not the best. It's also not the bad. As you can see, there is a robot coming out of nowhere, passing between the wall and the desk. Not bad, but also not very best. We're going to see what we get out of flow. I would say though, typically I get better output out of flow than I get on Gemini. I'm not sure why, because it's the same model, but that's typically the case. Also probably has to do with the fact that we're getting two outputs out of flow versus one on Gemini. So typically also one is better than the other. So take it for whatever it's worth. All right. And after a few minutes, it looked like we have our two generations, two outputs. Let's see how they look. It's actually open any full screen. All right, slightly different than the one that we got from Gemini. Didn't really like it. Let's see this other one. Let's see. Let's see. Not much better. Perhaps it had to do with the fact that 
we started from a random scene not from the beginning, as you saw on the original video. So take a look at this video. Towards the end, this is the scene that we are recreating. Take a look. So as you can see, we are recreating the last scene that you saw is slightly different than this, where we started from this scene. Doesn't really make much sense, but for the effects of this video, we're going to continue moving on. I think this one is the best, the one on the left. So we're going to add this to the scene and we're going to use these to continue pushing forward. So. What we're going to do now is we are going to stress 13. We're going to reopen this. All right. We're going to add this to the scene. We're going to switch to scene builder. And what we're going to do is, and this is how you do the continuation to be able to continue the video. We're going to find what is the best spot to continue. And we're going to save this frame. We're going to go to ChatGPT and create it. And we're actually going to provide a screenshot so you can see. So we're going to take a screenshot of this. Okay. This whole thing is going to make sense once you watch the next video, because you're going to get a better idea of why I am adding this to ChatGPT and providing a little contest. All right. So we created our prompt. We're going to save this. We're going to add this prompt. We're going to send it and we're going to allow it to actually generate the next scene. And we're going to be back here in a moment. All right. Look like it's ready. So let's span this full screen and let's take it. All right, so it could use a little bit more polishing and uh, switching in between both of these. As you can see here, once it squishes right here, it goes back up with the pen. So that's something that we could probably do on a video editor, but we can also cut it a little bit. Until the right which is kind of cool because it allows you to actually edit your video within. All right. It, it looks much more polished from what we initially got. But as you can see, that's how you stand the scene, maintain the character consistency, and you're able to get the whole background working for you. Now, if you wanted to jump to a different scene where let's say the character is in a different environment or it has another take, perhaps you want to take a look at what is in front of the character, highlighting the robots. That's when you use jump to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a quick prompt here to show exactly what is behind it and pay attention a little bit more to what is on the background. All right. So we're going to add our prompt here and we're going to send it. Let's see what we get as we are jumping to a different scene. Let's give it a moment and let's see what we get up with. 
and it looks like it's done. So let's bring this back up full screen and let's send. All right, so it took us from where we are. So in our office, took us to the bar where the robots were working and then back to our robot. And it got a really nice transition to bring us from one side to the other and back. So I cannot complain about the level of quality it has. Does it have some rough edges? Absolutely, this is AI and it will continue evolving. But as of right now, it has some rough edges that you would have to work on, perhaps taking that video into a video editor and editing the video. So you make sure that it, you actually get exactly what you want or perhaps prompting a little bit better. Talking about prompting, once the video is recorded and published, I will have the link down in the description below. But if you don't want to wait or if you don't want to come back to this video, you can always subscribe to my newsletter. And I will leave you the link down in the description below as well. Lastly, I will leave you a, a resource that I have put together for you. It's completely free. And all you have to do is sign up for my newsletter. I will send you the free resource that will help you get the most out of video three. With that being said, I really appreciate you taking your time watching this video with me. Thank you for spending this time trying to learn about video three and some of the capabilities and opportunities that come with this video generator if you like what you see again one more time i would ask you to please like this video subscribe to the channel i'm releasing videos like this once a week or sometimes even twice a week but my goal is to teach you the most i can about ai and some of the greatest things that come with it other than that thank you for watching i hope to see you in the next video